Hey, it's Steve. Well, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try to answer a whole variety of model railroad questions using the chat GPT uh, AI from OpenAI, and we'll see what kind of answers we get. I've had a lot of fun playing with this uh, AI here for actual work stuff. I mean, having it write code for me and everything else, which is like bananas, but you can actually have it write all kinds of everything from articles to essays and everything else. And you can ask it all kinds of questions too. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. I have it pulled up on my computer. Uh, I have an account set up with them so I can ask it all kinds of questions. And so we're going to go ahead and just try some random model railroad questions here. So, so an easy one to start here. What is the most common scale in model railroading? And not surprisingly, the most common scale in model railroading is HO scale. So what is the biggest manufacturer of model railroad equipment? Well, apparently it's difficult to say, but some of the most well-known are what you'd expect, Bachmann, Atlas, Cato, and Hornby, which obviously more for the UK Europe market. What is the most popular brand of DCC controller in model railroading? Well, Digitrax, NCE, and Lens. So nothing new there. It is important for a model railroader to consider their needs and budget when selecting a DCC controller. What is the most popular brand of N-scale track? Okay, I guess I, didn't, I worded that a little bit differently. So it says the most popular variety it thinks is code 55 track and code 80 being seconds. Well, there you go. So what is the average size of a model railroad in the United States, Australia, Japan, and the UK? And we'll see what it says. They can apparently vary greatly in size, and so it's difficult to say what the average size is. And there you go. No distinct answer, which isn't too surprising. Let's ask it something really interesting, like explain how to produce scale model trees from natural materials. So one method is to gather small branches and twigs from trees and shrubs in your area, and then use them to create a basic tree shape. You can use wire or floral wire to attach the branches to a base, or you can create a freestanding tree by interweaving the branches and securing them together. To add foliage to the tree, you can use a variety of materials such as lichen, moss, or small leaves. You can also create your own foliage using materials such as fine grade sawdust or wood shavings, which can be dyed or painted to the desired color. You can use glue or spray adhesive to attach the foliage to the tree. Another option is to use ready-made materials such as static grass or tree armatures, which can be purchased from model railroad supply stores or online. These materials can be shaped and molded to create realistic tree shapes and can be easily attached to a base or incorporated into a layout. Regardless of the method you choose, it is important to keep in mind the scale of your model railroad and to use and use materials that are appropriately sized, and this will help to create trees that look realistic and fit in with the rest of your layout. Okay, what is the most common type of freight car on railroads in the United States? And the most common type of freight car is the boxcar. Other common types include hopper cars, which are used to transport bulk materials such as coal, grain, and aggregates, and tank cars, which are used to transport liquids and gases. What are the most popular YouTube channels for model railroading? Now, one thing to note with the uh, OpenAI, uh, various AI systems that they have, the data was trained on data through sometime in 2021. And so the anything that's happened in the past year is not going to be really incorporated into the answers that you get from this AI. So popular channels include the Model Railroader Magazine channel, MRH Magazine, Model Railroad Academy, Jason Schron. I actually have not seen that channel, so I will have to check that out. Let's try a slightly different approach and ask what the most common YouTube channels are for scale modeling. So apparently there's the Scale Modeler, Scratch Builder, the Modeling News, Detail and Scale, and that's what it has 
the cited are the most popular. How many model railroaders are there in the United States? And of course, it probably won't have a number. Okay, so it gives the number of NMRA members, which is 20,000, and that for sure is way smaller than the number of modelers because most people do not become a member of the NMRA. However, uh, we can get, maybe get a better approximation and see if we can get the number of people that subscribe to, say, Model Railroader magazine. Uh, well, they cannot provide that information. I don't remember what the number was, but I do remember hearing something in the 400,000s range for subscribers for Model Railroader magazine, but I don't know when that was, and you know, so I don't really have a good answer for that myself. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know what kind of questions you would like me to ask the chat GPT and see if we can get some interesting responses, funny responses, or just off the wall or just really insightful. Um, and then I can do another follow-up video and answer or ask it some of those questions. You can yourself go to the OpenAI website and sign up for your own free account. And it doesn't cost anything for now, at least, because they're in the preview mode. And you can ask it all sorts of questions. And this is it's actually super useful for anything you might need to you know, try to find out. It's kind of like Google, but it'll actually give you directions. And not only that, uh, I mentioned briefly at the start that I'd, I was using it for some coding examples. You can actually say, write me a, a script to do this, and it will do it, which is kind of crazy. Um, again, you can have it write you essays if you want, which, uh, you know, is kind of weird. And it's going to be a big problem for, for schools, I'm sure, going forward when, you know, someone in high school can just use this to have it write a thousand word essay for them. And, and uh, it may be kind of obvious that it's from an AI and not from a person at this point. But I mean, give this five more years and it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. Anyway, what is the best way to get started in model railroading? So here are a few steps. One, decide on a scale. Model railroading is available in a range of scales, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Some of the most popular scales include HO, N, and O. Consider the space you have. Choose a layout, different types of layouts, small and portable to large and complex. Again, consider your available space, gather your supplies, blah, blah, blah. Build your layout. Join a club. Subscribe to Steve's Trains. And if you follow those steps, you should be well on your way to building and enjoying your own model railroad. Let's ask it some interesting questions. What is the future of model railroading? It is difficult to predict the exact future of model railroading as it will depend on a variety of factors such as technological developments, economic trends, and the interests and preferences of hobbyists. However, it is likely that model railroading will continue to evolve and adapt to new technologies and trends. Hmm. One area where there may be significant change in the future is the use of digital technology. Uh, it mentions DCC control, 3D printing, other digital fabrications. <laughs> model railroading may become more environmentally sustainable in the future. Obviously mentioning recycling and energy efficient systems to power their, their layouts. Um, and ultimately, the future of model railroading will depend on the passions and interests of the hobbyists who participate in it. As long as there are people who are excited about creating and operating miniature railroads, the hobby will continue to thrive and evolve. Will the hobby of model railroading grow or shrink in the coming years? Like any hobby, model railroading has its ups and downs and can be influenced by a variety of factors, such as technological developments, economic trends, and the interests and preferences of hobbyists, kind of like the previous answer. In recent years, the model railroad hobby has seen a resurgence of interest, particularly among younger hobbyists who are using new technologies such as 3D printing and digital fabrication to create custom parts and accessories. Uh, just one example. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of hobbyists out there that are doing that. You're seeing many channels now showing a a lot of of various builds that are almost entirely from 3D printed materials or uh, laser cut materials using their own laser cutters and, and things like that. <clears throat> and, and so it's really a pretty interesting evolution that we're seeing now. I think we're kind of going to the trend now where it's going to be the case where a lot of people will basically be making a lot of their own stuff for the hobby, which makes it interesting in that many manufacturers may struggle to, uh, you know, essentially sell a lot of the products that they've historically produced. 
uh, and may kind of evolve and go towards a print a print on demand type of setup. So yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I think certainly it's going to both help and hinder manufacturers. It's definitely something that's going to help the hobbyist itself. I started doing a little bit more three D printing, um, looking at doing other things like laser cutting as well to see you know how that can help with a lot of a lot of things. Certainly, one thing is going to be you know just the ability to literally produce any model that you want. If you want a particular structure. It, you can design your own custom structure, print it out. Basically, scratch building can become 3D modeling on a computer that you then print. You know, it's it's kind of evolving in in, a diff- in a different ways, but but certainly you can uh, really see how technology is going to greatly evolve here and and really change the hobby quite a bit from what it once was in terms of how things are made and you know and how people build things and, and everything else and anatypes and, and things that are available. So. You know, we're kind of getting to the point where if you have the ability to do any type of, of custom design work yourself or, or even just the growing the growing resource of online 3D files and stuff that are available that you can download and print yourself, it's, it's going to be the case where we're going to have a, a much larger supply of products available to us because of technology, which is very nice. Uh, at the same time, because you can do that, you know, hobby stores and everything else that cater to Mauer Erdinger pretty much having a hard time selling in store anymore. It's all becoming online sales and stuff like that too. So there's a lot of ch- changes for sure in the hobby. But uh, anyway, um, just wanted to share with you some of these uh, responses from ChatGPT. Again, it's kind of hard to think on the fly here of different questions to ask, but let me know in the description what kind of questions you might have that would be fun to ask the ChatGPT AI here. And we can see what kind of responses we can get. Maybe something insightful, again, maybe just funny, but uh, Certainly, the evolution of AI is, is pretty interesting and something that I've been starting to use a little bit more with my regular work, but but uh, definitely a interesting future ahead in a lot of different ways. And uh, just wanted to kind of have some fun today and share some responses from an AI and see what it thinks about model railroading. Anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.